Hello and welcome again to another episode of Battle Ready. Uh, just, just me today, no Drake, and the reason is today I wanted to review uh, the latest Warhammer Plus animation that's just finished, and that is Interrogator. Now, uh, Drake hasn't watched it, and I'm not so sure that he's going to watch it, but that's, I'll get into that. Um, but I wanted to review it spoiler-free, right? There's not going to be any spoilers if anybody is interested in Interrogator, wants to watch it. Um, but I'll tell you, I think, I think overall it was pretty good. Uh, I have some nits I'd like to pick, and I'll get to that uh, at the end. But uh, overall it was pretty good. So a couple of things. First, I am, I'm a little bit of a sucker for the sort of the film noir aesthetic. I really like it. I love those old gumshoe type cases and, you know, the 1940s era. The lady comes into the private eye in a dark night as he puts his alcohol away. It's, oh, my gosh. It's just that, that whole aesthetic, uh, I, I think, is pretty cool. And Interrogator isn't quite that, but it definitely plays into a lot of those tropes. You've got the sort of down on his luck, uh, almost anti-hero, not quite anti-hero protagonist. You've got friends that he relies on, and there's this backstory that evolves over the course of the, of the narrative. Um, the black and white aesthetic, I think, is helpful in this one. And overall, I think it's I think it's pretty good. Um, I think the story, as it goes from place to place, is pretty fun. There is from the, about the first episode forward. There's pretty much this overarching thing. There's a, something that the main character Jurgen, that the protagonist, he wants to do. He wants to get to and to accomplish. And there's a lot of side trips along the way, and there's a lot of gathering information. But it all seems to be in, in furtherance of that purpose. So the narrative is actually pretty, pretty solid. Uh, the animation quality is fine. It's, it's very similar to um, a lot of the hammer and bolters, right? So it's not perfect, beautiful, Pixar-level animation. I don't think that's what they were going for. But it's perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable. There's no point at which I thought, you know, it, it took me out of the story or it took the, ex the experience away from me. Uh, none of that happened. I thought it was pretty engaging. Um, there are a couple of twists and turns throughout the story that are sort of cool. There are characters who, you know, things happen to them that you wouldn't expect. And again, no spoilers. But uh, definitely... Not any, you know, you don't know who's safe and who's not safe, with the possible exception of the main character, I guess. The story really is about him and coming to grips with an event in his past. Uh, I would recommend it, unless the film noir type thing is, you know, you hate that, that's going to that's gonna sour you a little bit on Interrogator. Because like I said, it's, it's not exactly the same, but it, it leans in to a lot of those, those themes. Um, but other than that, I think it's great. You know, Drake and I are not 40k players. We have Kill Team, and we've played a couple of learning games. Um, but that's, but we haven't, I don't think we've even played a full game with the equipment and everything. So, uh, we are just not in that world, in that universe. Most of what I know about 40k lore-wise has come from watching those animations and then, you know, some YouTube videos and things like that. So it's not, uh, it, I, I'm not, I don't enjoy it just because it's 40K. Cause I mean, I think 40K is cool. I don't have any problems with 40K, but it's not my thing. And I still found it to be very enjoyable. There was nothing about the show that really required you to be a 40K fan. I think it would be helpful if you knew what an interrogator and what an inquisitor were. Uh, those are subjects that come up and, and it's helpful to know what they are. But even then, I think the show does a pretty good job of giving somebody who doesn't know, get, letting them know the gist of it, even if they don't go into 
you know, details or history and that sort of thing. So if you aren't a 40K person, then I, would, I wouldn't be dissuaded by, by the fact that it's 40K focused. It all takes place on a single hive world. Uh, so it's like a, just a super populated mass of you know, slums and gangs mixed with cathedrals. And you know, there's the nice areas and the bad areas. It's, it's, uh, it's really pretty fun. It's got the, about the same level of violence as you can come, as, you know, we've sort of come to expect from most of these Warhammer animations. Um, it definitely has uh, some exciting elements to it. I was entertained in all of them. Uh, the only thing I didn't really like is sometimes, you know, it's two weeks between episodes. And maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but my brain just sometimes had trouble remembering where we were, where it left off two weeks previously. Um, usually, once the next episode started, it would sort of jog my memory, but I think it would be better to sort of binge them. But then again, that's what I feel about everything. I like, I like, every, I like to binge everything. I, you know, if a show that I like is coming out, I'll wait till it's completely out, like, you know, a Game of Thrones or something like that. I'll wait till it's completely out and then watch it so that I can just watch it, you know, one episode a night or something like that. But overall, I give it a thumbs up. I think that Interrogator was pretty fun. I think it's probably the most mature um, series on Warhammer Plus so far. And by mature, I mean dealing with more adult themes, things like trauma and revenge and... Um, that sort of thing, abuse, struggles like that, those are all in there in some level. So it's a little bit more mature than something like Angels of Death, though I enjoyed it, which is just sort of like get in there, kill the bad guys. Bad guys show up, kill them. More bad guys show up, kill them. It wasn't, bad guys get on the base, on the boat, kill them. It, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of thematic maturity to it, even though, again, I loved that. I thought it was super fun. So the bad things, a couple of little bad things to think. First of all, when I say mature, thematically that's the case, but it's, you know, it's just guys with guns and shooting other people. So I'm not, I don't think it's any more mature than anything else has been on Warhammer Plus. And I think they tried a little hard because there are some things that make me, I mean, maybe Drake will watch it. I don't know, but there's some things that certainly make me hesitant. I think that, and I know that, you know, it's sometimes what uh, people from England or Britain, the UK, think are, you know, objectionable differs a little bit. I'm in America, uh, differs from what the American sort of sensibilities are. But at least from my perspective, I absolutely disliked the foul language. And uh, for, for two reasons. One, it does make me think about whether Drake should watch it. But two, the way that they did it, they just sort of shoved a word in, a dropped an F-bomb or the S word or something like that, just sort of like shoved it in maybe once an episode. Some episodes maybe have two. But because of that, it's not like this was, you know, you know, every character was using it to show that in this world, everyone is coarse and this is just how it is in the hive world and this is how people are and you have to get used to that. That would have been, a, I think, a better artistic choice. Maybe not better for watching it with kids, but at least an artistic choice. Or they should have gone the other way and, either, and made up words, like in Battlestar Galactica where they use frack or Firefly had a whole series of made up swear words. And the characters' reactions to them let you know that, oh, that is, a, that, is, that is coarse language in this area. And they do it sometimes when they talk about, uh, you know, they'll go to swear, and instead of invoking the name of deity, obviously they invoke the name of the emperor. And they'll say things like, oh, this throne damned situation we're in or whatever. And it's like, yeah, the, you, it fully brought forth the sense that this is a curse. This is somebody who's speaking coarsely and disrespectfully. And this is somebody whose situation has caused them to act that way and feel that way without it actually 
needing to use the words. And I really wish they'd sort of gone one way or the other on it. I feel like they could have gone, I'm, as the, the dad in this father-son duo, I wish they'd gone the, the way of not using foul language. But I think the way that they went of just like sticking one in here and there, it felt like they were saying, see, 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 we can be adult, see? And frankly, there's very few things in life less adult and less mature than doing a shock value swear word. It was, it was super unnecessary and it could have been handled one of those other two ways. And I think it, it just would have felt better artistically. Um, the other thing that happened that is a little bit of a nitpick is you definitely, the, the show builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds, it's nine episodes. And at the end of the eighth episode, you, you're like, you're, you're right there. And then in the ninth episode, like half the episode is just an exposition dump. And that was really disappointing because the episodes are only, you know, between 10 and 15 minutes long, maybe. And, uh, to spend a half the episode where Jurgen is finding out that, you know, not everything is what it seemed. And again, no spoilers, not giving anything away, but it's a little bit like how, you know, I don't know if you, I've read several mystery books and some of them are really good, but sometimes I'll read a book and you're like, Ooh, who did it? You know, I don't know. And then they introduce a new character in the final three chapters and turns out they're the murderer. It's like, well, what did I, what did I even read the rest of this book for? How am I supposed to figure it out if you don't even introduce the character, the murder character, until the very end? I don't know. But it was a little bit like that, where they introduce some things at the very end and sort of fill in a bunch of backstory. And it does change what, you know, the consequences of what had happened before, which maybe sets up a season two, maybe. Um, but I found that really disappointing. Instead of teaching that to us uh, organically or having us see it, you know, discover it piece by piece as we had for the sort of the main plot line, the exposition jump dump just comes at the end. It's like, here's what we meant. Here's what we said. And uh, not a fan, not a fan of that. But both of those things are relatively minor gripes. Um, I think that overall the show is pretty good. I would watch it again. I think it had really good moments. Whether or not it's appropriate for Drake, who is 10, ah, I don't know. I'm going to have to give it more thought. He hasn't really asked about it or requested to see it. I don't know if, you know, maybe if he was bugging me about it every day and asking, he might wear me down at some point. But at least for now, I don't know. I don't know. Now, there is one other thing uh, that they talk about when they were first advertising it. They said, oh, you have to be careful watching this with kids because there's drug use. And uh, again, no spoilers, but there, I, technically that's true. There is drug use. However, in the first episode, he, Jurgen complains of a headache and it takes two pills. And for all we know, or all your kid, 10, 11, 12 year old knows, that's aspirin, right? Several episodes later, we find out what that drug is and where it comes from. And I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like narcotics to me. Once, we, once you get the background information of it, now you might argue and that it's somewhat darker, it's actually a darker, uh, you know, more grim dark drug than just narcotics, but it isn't the kind of thing where I would be worried that it's, somehow influencing my kid or, you know, glamorizing drug use or anything like that. In fact, again, because of the film noir aesthetic, it's, it's really treated very negatively. I mean, it's, it's definitely portrayed as a weakness of the protagonist more than it's some kind of cool thing he does to, you know, to be exciting or do cool moves or whatever. So the drug use thing is very, uh, is I, I guess present, but it would not even I would not even have given it a second thought about it being a um, you know something I would worry about showing my kids because it would glamorize drugs or you know make them interested or like I said it makes them not interested I think uh, the violence is 
about the same level. So if you're okay with Hammer and Bolter or Angels of Death or any of those other ones, same level. There's nothing especially gruesome or grotesque about it. In fact, several Hammer and Bolters, like the Plague Song, are more grotesque than, um, than this. But yeah, so overall, I just think it's, uh, I thought it was pretty fun. Overall, I had a good time. I was excited on every other week when it was a um, interrogator week. And I think part of that excitement was just, I, I love the animations. But part of that excitement too was the story was pretty, pretty interesting. And I was always in, and it had little cliffhangers at the end of each episode, mostly. Most episodes, not big ones, not huge, like edge of your seat, you're going to die if you don't know. But at the end of each episode, it always left me thinking, oh, I wonder what, I wonder where we're going from here. And then the next time an episode came out, I'd always think, oh yeah, I got to watch that and find out what happened. So the story overall was pretty intriguing and I did enjoy it. So if you've been on the fence about Interrogator and are wondering whether or not it is worth it to watch, I would say yes. Granted, it's not perfect. It's got some flaws, but overall, very fun. It's not going to win any Emmys, but uh, very fun, very interesting. And I'm sure people that enjoy 40K and know, know the lore far, far better than I could, we get even more out of it. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful if you're interested at all. And this has been another episode of Battle Ready. Thanks so much for watching.